Alien Isolation sometimes hints at being the alien game you've always wanted. One that makes the alien terrifying, one that prioritizes staying safe over aggressive action. This game occasionally captures both that gut-wrenching sense of fear and the momentary comfort of escape. Every breath could be your last, and so you savor each one. Oh, but how I wish these moments were more common in Alien Isolation. Most of the game is devoted to door opening, lever pulling, and walking. So very much walking and backtracking. So many old and predictable video game cliches. External communications disabled by order of Apollo. Facility offline. All outgoing communications halted. <sighs> That's just great. What makes Alien Isolation so ultimately disappointing is that when it's on, it's on. You are Ellen Ripley's daughter Amanda, seeking information about your mother's fate aboard the Sevastopol, a derelict space station home to a remaining population of skittish survivors and a snarling xenomorph drone. The game is at its best when the alien is a clear and present danger. You crouch, slink, and peek around corners and above crates from a first-person perspective, avoiding the glances of that gross and frightening creature. When all mechanics are working as intended, Alien Evasion is dread distilled into its purest, simplest form. You are armed with a couple of standard firearms and a few helpful gadgets, but the motion tracker is the most vital tool you possess. Hold a button and the tracker's dot shows you the relative location of nearby entities, friends and foes alike. The tracker does not tell you, however, if the alien is above you or below you. Hearing the Xeno's clawed feet can paralyze you with fear, and you must battle your basic fight-or-flight instincts when you hear the alien's shuddering exoskeleton. Run away if it sees you, and you'll probably die. The thing is fast. Try to fight it, at least before you grab a flamethrower that temporarily sends it scurrying, and you will definitely die. <laughs> Your best bet is to stay crouched, stay hidden, and stay aware. These are the moments when alien isolation weighs heaviest on your soul. Hide in a locker and you see the alien enter the room. It sidles up to your hiding place and you hold your breath. If the Xeno hears your gasps, or if you fail to lean into the rear of the locker, it snatches you from your shelter and you peer into its two gaping maws before succumbing to death. <laughs> So I can't deny the appeal of dodging the murderous menace, but these game-defining high points account for only a few chapters out of many, and Alien Isolation doesn't even make the most out of them. The game frequently changes the rules, such as allowing the alien to camp out for you in overhead openings without telling you. The trial and error, combined with the infrequent chances to save, can be frustrating. Worse still, alien encounters are limited to just those few levels. Typically, you're walking, pulling levers, riding elevators, and, of course, walking some more. This is the downtime, the time for building atmosphere, and Alien Isolation at least embraces the right 1970s retro-futuristic style. The game itself, however, is not much of a looker, even though the Alien itself looks fantastic. Maintenance access and server hub reception. Report in as you go. The exploration ultimately falls flat, a victim to backtracking and simplistic gameplay elements devoid of creativity. Many video games feature security cameras that alert the enemy to your presence, but in Alien Isolation, the camera off switch is often located directly beneath the camera. Sometimes you must log into computer terminals to find codes that unlock important doors, but the email with the code might be on the same terminal that does the unlocking. The rewiring stations that allow you to disable cameras may also allow you to manipulate the Sevastopol's air purification mechanism, but rarely does this have a meaningful effect. Androids serve as your most frequent foe in Alien Isolation, and they're common enough that it's tempting to bash them straight on with a stun baton. A typical synthetic turncoat won't take too kindly to a direct attack, though, and will aggressively fling you at a nearby wall, if not outright choke you. 
The first-person perspective makes becoming a synthetics personal yo-yo frightening and disorienting. You feel Ripley's fear as you desperately scan the environment, seeking a clear path through danger. Other synthetic encounters are simply ridiculous, though. To deal with synthetics is often to engage in a silly game of tag, in which you lead a few androids around in circles until you buy yourself enough time to turn and toss a Molotov cocktail at them. It's an encounter with synthetics at the bottom of a late-game elevator that sends Alien Isolation zooming off the rails. The game tries to mimic an action game poorly before reaching its unsatisfying conclusion, more than a dozen long, often boring hours after you started. Alien Isolation provides us a glimpse at the ultimate alien game. It's too bad that brief glimpse is surrounded by so many hours of uneventful filler. Oh my god. 